Hello everyone, it's Ed here, uh, AccuBase in IRC. I'm here to do just a quick video for a couple of people who requested this one, uh, doing Linux on a GPD Win. Uh, now, probably not everyone's going to know what the GPD Win is, although it's been all over the internet for god knows how long now, a couple of months I think. Um, I've had, I actually got this one in about May of this year, but I've literally only just got it back because I had to send it right back to be repaired, unfortunately the touchscreen duffed out on me. But whatever. Uh, so uh, it's weird this one because Linux pretty much works on this out of the box, but there's just a few small little things you've got to do with it. At the moment, there is a custom kernel required, um, but it's not it's not got that much to it. But and apparently it is all being upstreamed. So probably if you're watching this video in about six months' time, you're probably not going to need this kernel. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. So. Uh, what I've done already is I have pre-installed it with Ubuntu GNOME, although I have left it, basically I've just installed it and done absolutely nothing else to it, just to kind of walk you through all the steps essentially. So, GPD Win. Uh, if you don't know what it is, I'm not going to give you a full review of it in this video, but basically it's a small, as you can see, small kind of clamshell device. Uh, let's give you a bit of scale. This is a Nexus 4 phone, so, you know, about an inch bigger than a Nexus 4, little five and a half inch screen on the GPD Win, and you might think, a device of that size, it's probably running like a crappy little ARM processor like what you get in the phone, but weirdly, no, it's running an Intel Atom, and it comes preloaded with a full version of Windows 10, which is great if you're into Windows 10. Uh, they basically market this device as a gaming, it's like a Windows 10 handheld, you know, it's got game, game, you know, controls on it, got, uh, buttons on the back, um, basically Xbox controls. Uh, yeah, great. I really like this device, actually. It's got a keyboard a bit naff, but it's fine. It's better than using a touch keyboard, I suppose. Um, so... You know, I thought, as soon as I saw this device, I thought, I want to put, a, I want to put Linux on it, and... So, here it is. Um, the instructions I'm reading, um, someone's basically done all of the work. I'm basically just kind of going through the instructions and just recording it just so you can kind of see what's going on with it. So, I'll boot it up now and you'll see I've got Ubuntu uh, loading up on it. Ubuntu GNOME anyway. Now, I know I said I've not done anything to this Ubuntu GNOME yet, but I have done one or two small things just in Grub. Uh, there's a couple of options in Grub that I've had to do, because if you don't, uh, the whole thing just crashes and burns when it boots, but I'll I'll put all that in the description if I can, so... Uh, nothing major, it's just like Intel um, graphics things, just to stop the graphics card crashing out when GNOME loads up. Uh, so I'll just lock this load up, and we'll see what we've got. So yeah, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it, but as you should be able to see the screen's actually sideways, which is always a good start. Um, as you can probably see as well, this little right joystick controls the mouse. Uh, it is a touchscreen as well, touchscreen works absolutely fine, no problems with that at all. Uh, I'll just pop my password into that. Super secret password. Uh, so, first thing you probably want to gonna do is get that touchscreen sorted out, get it nice and uh, landscape portrait, so file terminal. And this one do I believe I've got it in here somewhere. Next one dash o right. Nice and simple. There we go, that should rotate it. And then I'm just gonna turn the rotation lock on GNOME so it doesn't keep spinning around on me. But you know, if you don't want that then don't have it. Uh, I've also um, got all of the files that I'm going to show you here basically just preloaded on an SD card. Um, so I'm just going to whack the SD card in here. Whoop. I'm going to drop it. Uh, SD card in. Whoop. Just cut my nails so this isn't working very well. But... There we go. Right, so that should show up in your file manager. 
for some reason it's going really choppy at the moment and not a clue why but whatever Ooh, okay I guess that's key card I'm not going to show up in my file manager I'll get out and put it in the SD thing to the USB thing get in yeah for whatever reason the SD card slot in this it works but I guess it's not hot pluggable under Linux you've just got to kind of boot it up with it in it I guess I'll got to do that bit so yeah uh, a couple of files in here I've got four Linux uh, kernel packages they're just dead files uh, go you can see a little orange icon there a little uh, Linux files there so let's get the uh, terminal open first thing I want to do is get that kernel installed so I'm just going to get rid of this terminal and just open one up in this file because god knows where it is in the file system Go and so we're just gonna do sudo deep package i Linux and a star just to get them all in. Password in again. Okay, wait for that to do its thing. Uh, as you probably well, I'm not even sure if you can actually see this very well on the camera. Maybe I should have just done this screen grab really, but um, you might notice in the gnome. Uh, kind of indicators uh, there is no Wi-Fi. Uh, that's something we're going to have to do because yeah, you need Wi-Fi really, uh, unless you want to stick in a bloody USB Ethernet cable or something, I guess. But nah, you want Wi-Fi on a device like this, so just let that kernel install, and we'll get that in a second. There we go. No, it's going to be a bit nice now as well. Uh, so there's five other files inside this little USB stick that I've run in there. Um, one of them is the firmware file for the Wi-Fi card. So, yep, we're going to be needing that. A uh, couple of the other ones are for things like uh, brightness control, because I don't believe the brightness control works out of the box. No, see, it's not doing anything there, is it? So it's just on full whack at the moment. Um, there's another one in there that's for the uh, battery um, battery indicator in GNOME because again as you can probably see there's nothing in there telling me how much juice I've got left so god knows how this video is going to go with that um, there's also uh, a couple of other ones in there that one's for um, Pulse Audio because uh, there is something weird with the headphone jack I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head but you need to kind of just tweak the side a little bit as well to make that work. Uh, and I believe there's like a UDEV rule in there as well, which is, um, which I actually know, I think that's for the battery sensor, isn't it? So, yeah, just get that out of the way. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to get the uh, firmware driver for the Wi Fi card working, which is the, here, let's bring it up, which is the BRCMFMAC, yada yada yada, dot txt. Uh, so we're just going to copy that, cp, brc, something or other, uh, over to dash slash lib slash firmware slash brcm. So, oh, I'm going to have to speed it up, or it's not going to work. Okay, lib, oh, come on, tab, tab key is not working, uh, firmware, brcm go so that will give us wi-fi when we redo it i mean you can probably just reload the um network manager if you really want but uh, i'll just do it all in one go and then reboot the lot so just installed the kernel so i don't need to do that uh next thing we need to do is we do need to have a bit, add a bit of a thing to the uh, grub command line as well which is a couple of different intel related Things. Again, like I'm saying, the hard stuff it crashing when it boots, but there is another one as well that is kind of kind of um, give us a little bit more to do as well. So we want FB CON equals rotate colon one, and we also want uh, DMI underscore product underscore name equals big capital letters gpd dash win oh i can't remember what's an aisle i think it's a 155 i'm sure i'll find that 
find out if I'm wrong. Okay, so it's only caps mark, save that. Okay, great. So, next thing we need to do is we're going to just edit the uh, pulsardio demon.com file, which is in slash etc slash pulse slash demon.com. There we go. And essentially, what we need to do here is we just need to set real time scheduling to no, which is apparently some kind of bug in in the uh, audio driver for this device. So we need to just drop that down. Save. Uh, next thing that we need to do is we've got two config files here that need to just be copied over to uh, CHRT which is an ALSA configuration file which is the hi-fi.conf so we need to sudo cp hi-fi.conf we need to copy that and there is another one in there as well which is the uh, chtrt5645 file uh, that also needs to go to the same place so let's go into slash user slash share slash ALSA also, yep, also, slash UCM, slash CH, go, copy hi-fi.com, and we're also going to copy that uh, CH, uh, chtrt file, which is there, and oh, that's gone over, great. Okay, next thing we're going to be needing to do is, there is, I believe, a UDEV file in here, let me just find it, which is uh, 99-local.hwdb. And we're just going to copy that over to slash lib slash UDEV, UDEV, yes, there we go, hdwb.d, and we're going to just block that there. Helps so I'll put the file name in first. And then slash local hdbb. There we go. Put sudo in it. Always helpful. Go. Okay, and we're pretty much almost done. Last thing we're going to be needing to block in there is just the uh, sensor.rules, which is, I believe, for the battery sensors. Which is 60 dash sensor rules. There we go. So we're just going to update all our UDEV stuff. So sudo udev ADM hdwb dash update. And let that do its thing. Go. I'm just going to double check exactly what that file is in the uh, group file as well. I'll go on because I don't want to get it wrong. Okay, so it's is an i55 which is not what I've done so I'm just going to go back and edit that and grub cmd slash linux and it's win i55 so get that done and we're just going to uh, rebuild grub just to get that new kernel in there and get those uh, config files going as well grub config file that is that will do its thing, and job done. So, just what I'll do is I will shut it down and just uh, get that SD card out of there. I suppose it doesn't matter actually, I'll just unplug it. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll just CD out of there so I'm not in the final and just get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this screen's a bit too small to use one easier thing, really. Oh, I guess that might be a known problem as well. Okay, so we're just going to reboot. And uh, with any luck, once that's all booted up, we're basically just going to have a fully functional device. Uh, again, we're going to have to rotate the screen again. Um, I've found that sometimes the accelerometer in the device does basically do its job, and you can essentially just, you know, rotate it by tipping the device up, but sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does, I guess it just depends. Uh, as you can see, the, all the text consoles are the right way up, so that's always a good start. Uh, but GDM isn't, so let's just see if it does work if we tilt it. Uh, no. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to whack that simple thingy again. Just 
that up. And that do it still. Well, I'll turn that rotation lock off now. I realise that's not going to work. See, so as you can see now, we've got nice bright screen, and the brightness does turn up and down when I slide it around. Which is good. I'm going to turn it right up now, just so the video actually shows up. Turn that rotation lock off and see if it works. There we go. And it's done it upside down, so a little bit buggy, but whatever. Turn that off, and that's pretty much it, as far as I'm aware. Uh, Wi-Fi now works, so I guess I can uh, just go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi over here. Wait a second. Right. And it comes up with a system over again for God knows why. And yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest with you. It's all pretty much golden now. Uh, as you can see, I've apparently got nine hours left on the battery, which seems pretty high, but, I mean, it's, it's actually, sounds about right actually, because when I've used this device under Windows, I have found that um, the battery life is actually pretty damn good, actually, even when you are gaming on it, uh, you usually, usually get eight, between 8 and 10 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, yeah, so, there you go, GPD win running Ubuntu GNOME. Um, like I said, it is, uh, okay, let's quit on there. It is dual booting at the moment. Uh, just cause uh, I have found unfortunately that a lot of games uh, on this device anyway um, what I like Steam games that I like to play Rocket League and that kind of thing run like absolute crap on the Linux uh, don't really know why um, it's just one of them things I suppose so I am dual booting it with Windows just for that reason just to uh, you know get my games fixed I suppose cause you know I did get this as a gaming device so it doesn't really <clears throat> makes sense to lose that functionality I suppose uh, so yeah uh, any questions at all just let me know I suppose I'm in the Linux Distro Community IRP channel pretty much all the time uh, under the name of AkuBase uh, but really I'm called Ed so feel free to call me that uh, yeah keep it even running once you know and my battery life's apparently gone down to 4 hours yeah. oh. there we go I'll end this one now and uh, see how that one goes then. See you later guys!